Eric, I want to thank you for meeting me in this super duper secret location. But uh, my, my first question to you, not just in San Diego, not just in St. Louis, and not just in Oakland, but what are the purposes of this meeting? Marty, 99.99% of the time the fans have the media asking questions of the NFL and of teams and making comments to the NFL and the teams. This is an opportunity for them to do it directly, and it's an important step. Does it matter? Is it really going to matter? I mean, I'm going to expect that the emotion, the reaction, all three cities are the same. Every team, every every fan base, they love their team. It's going to rip their heart out. It, it means a lot to them. Does it? Is it really going to matter to, to the owners, ultimately, what the fans have to say? Yes, I think it matters, but I think it's also important to, to acknowledge that it's not one night, it's not one day, it's not one game. It's a long period of time of support that gets demonstrated, and this is a piece of that. I would also say that in the process of analyzing whether it makes sense for a team to relocate and ultimately uh, whether the owners vote yes or no on any particular application if it's made, the demonstration of support, people coming out to something like this, taking their own time to do it when it's not a game, uh, that does register. Um, will it? Will one moment of it or one statement make the difference? But no, the totality of it over a long period of time with this being one event does make a difference. I remember the first time that I think I met you back in Arizona at those original meetings. And I remember you said it would help if the city pays attention to what the team wants. Last week, Mark Fabiani says the team wants Carson. They would think about downtown if that doesn't work out. The city of San Diego just launched a video about their vision for Mission Valley. Is there even a point when they can't even agree on, what the, on the location and they're not listening to what the team wants? I think there's always hope until the train has left the station and I think there have been other times when teams have thought that it was in their best interest to go in direction A only to change their minds and decide that direction B is the better course of action and you, no one can tell how this is going to turn out no one knows for certain which clubs will apply if any mm -hmm. No one knows for certain what will happen in any of the three individual markets. And I don't think anyone has a perfect window into the mind of any of the three owners who really have to make these tough calls for themselves. So I think the right thing to do is to stay hopeful. And the right work plan is to produce the best possible outcome in each city. And then things will take care of themselves from there. I think last month you mentioned that, you know, the Chargers have walked away from the negotiating table. They walked away quite some time ago, haven't been back since. And you mentioned that the NFL could negotiate directly with the city of San Diego. Has that happened? And if so, how have those talks progressed? It has happened and it's been tangible in that the, we've been presented with the term sheet. And the term sheet is the first step in having a discussion, a negotiation, if you will, on trying to produce a set of terms which could be attractive to the owners of the NFL. I think it's important to note that while the Chargers have said that they're not negotiating, they have not refused to be in the room or be in the conversation. And so we are talking to them. They do come to the meetings, and I think that's an important attribute of it. So they're keeping track of what's going on. Do you think the city of San Diego has so far presented a viable plan? Is this something the NFL thinks could be legitimate, that, that has legs? It's too early to tell, Marty. The, the, the point in time that you measure that is when either there's an alternative or when an owner wants to uh, wants the authority from his fellow owners to sign a lease or or begin the construction of a project either in the existing market or some other market that's the time to measure whether it's a success the biggest obstacle so far seems to have been the expedited eir i think mark fabiani refers it as, refers to it as a half-baked plan i'm not does the nfl share the same views what do you think of the expedited EIR that the, that the city completed? Well, I'm not an, a lawyer, and I'm certainly not an, an environmental regulation expert. So we have to take into account the advice from all sources, from the city, from the chargers, and from uh, independent uh, experts that, uh, that are available to the league. I think the best thing, if the city thinks it can work, is to keep going down that path and seeing if they can get through each of the milestones. They've, they, they've filed it, they've taken comments, they, um, they need to adopt it, and uh, as those things go on, you can determine how big the risks are. Until then, it's somewhat guesswork by experts, but still guesswork.
This may be a bit of a long-winded, long-winded question. The Chargers have been very protected of their 25% in Los Angeles, which is part of the reason for, for moving on this when nothing was happening in San Diego. The same token, I can't imagine Jerry Jones allowing another team to move within 90 miles uh, of the Dallas Cowboys. So that being said, if two teams go to Los Angeles, which seems, which seems to, be, to be the plan, and San Diego loses one of their teams, how does that not affect this market? If, you're, if you have two owners in Los Angeles and LA has no team, why wouldn't they try to protect and not allow a, a third team within 90 miles? Well, the league has been very clear with all of the clubs, and um, the Chargers have acknowledged that San Diego, the San Diego market and the Los Angeles market are two separate and distinct markets. The Chargers have played in San Diego and have done well mm -hmm. with one team in Los Angeles and with two teams in Los Angeles. So we uh, believe that that can happen again. Um, but I do want to make a comment on the Chargers organization and their staff and their success. It is a very, very well-run organization. They have done a tremendous job, uh, even as their stadium has gotten older and older and more difficult to, to uh, get that job done well. And I believe that they will do well uh, wherever they go. Will you encourage San Diego to go back in talks with, I mean, sorry, the Chargers to get back in talks with San Diego? Or is there, is there really no point until a vote is, is made perhaps early next year? Well, I encourage uh, any of the clubs in these situations, and it happens to be three clubs now, but there have been other clubs um, over the course of uh, the years I've been at the NFL. I encourage them constantly to be at the negotiating table. Why would you not be at the negotiating table? But let me just caution your viewers and listeners okay. that people assume when a particular person is not at the negotiating table that they've walked away or that they're not in negotiating and they're not engaging. I don't see the world of negotiation that way. You can negotiate by being at the table and you can negotiate by not being at the table. In each case you're sending a message. Uh, sometimes you send someone on your behalf, sometimes you walk away from the table. That is all part of a negotiation when you're sending key messages about what your intentions are, what your views are. So I wouldn't take a simplistic view and say that just because someone's not at the negotiating table that they're not negotiating or not listening, I should say, and not engaged. In your opinion, what type of progress has, have, has, have they made progress since this process started early in January? Yes, I think it's uh, not, um, it, it's inarguable. It's, it, they've definitely made progress. There was no plan, there was no intention to put together a plan. And the mayor has uh, taken a leadership position, the county has joined them, and they're doing their best from what we can tell. That has not produced an actionable, specific plan uh, that is attractive to uh, the NFL uh, or to the Chargers, but there is progress. Uh, Mark Fabiani says that the biggest hindrance has been that, 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 the, that they went ahead with CSAG. The five months they lost there, they didn't have time to go ahead and complete an EIR, EIR the way it should. If, if the city of San Diego thinks they're making progress, if they actually have some sort of plan together, why not delay a vote? Why does the vote have to happen? Why not wait one more year? Well, first of all, I'm not going to say that the vote will happen or won't happen in January or February or March in time for the 2016 season. That, that, that is a decision that's based on a lot of factors, and San Diego and the considerations related to San Diego will not be the only set of factors. But at least when you look through it, uh, through the Chargers' eyes, you have to understand that they and appreciate that they have been at this through many changes in leadership with many locations and many plans and nothing has um, come about. So they felt like they had to develop an alternative. And when someone develops an alternative and it's ready to go, to say to them, don't take it and hope that it might change in the future, that's a pretty tall order when for 12 or 13 or 14 years it's come out the other way. Last thing for me, is there really, is there anything fans can do? I mean, you mentioned, listen, you, you had the forum here tonight in San Diego. You, you're going to have one in Oakland tomorrow. You had it in St. Louis yesterday. Is there anything fans can do? I mean, you can't blame fans if they're staying away and they're, they're disenchanted and they feel abandoned. Is there really anything a fan in any of these markets can do when it comes to keeping their, their, their teams? It seems like this is a decision out of their hands. This is about the 32 owners getting together and they make the decision. The 32 owners do make the decision. They analyze. They they ask us to analyze a lot of information that they can consider. Mm -hmm. And one of the pieces of information that's strongest is the fan support. 
And so what I would say to the fans is support your team and support your community leadership that's trying to put this together. They have a hard job too. These are not necessarily popular decisions and they're not easy things to carry across the goal line. So support the local leadership and support the team. That's the best the fans can do. Thank you for your time, Eric. I appreciate it.